Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. This is probably going to be a little esoteric today, maybe. I'm thinking about shadow. You can see behind me right, how the shadow cuts across my urban sanctuary, my backyard. Sun is very bright on the other side of the house. The house provides a nice shadow. Um, the, what do I want to say, the association with the word shadow sometimes is not very positive. People lurking in the shadows, um, a shadow government, those are pretty negative um, connotations or use of, of the word shadow. On the other hand, um, Carl Jung tried to explain to us that we all have our shadow selves. They're just part of us, um, the yin and the yang, sort of, of our being. And then you look at somebody, uh, something like the Bible, um, talking about how, um, you know, a tree grew up and so-and-so was sheltered in the shadow, sheltered from the desert sun in the shadow. All these different understandings of shadow and meanings from very positive, like sheltering, being sheltered from the desert sun to quite negative, having danger lurking in the shadows where we can't see things. And it makes me wonder, um, not really wonder, it makes me think about how so much of our lives we ascribe some meaning to something that takes it in one direction or another, either a positive association or a negative. And also how our lives are holistic, like Jung was explaining, um, that we have the shadow self in all of us and how do we come to deal with it? How do we embrace the, the whole of life, the shalom? Certainly Jewish understanding of life is much more holistic than the Christian understanding, at least it was in Jesus' day. Christian understanding was um, greatly Hellenized with the Greek understanding of separation of body and soul, and that became part of the Christian understanding, whereas uh, in Judaism they were one and the same. I just, I don't know what I want to do with this, but I, I thought I'd bring it before you and let you be perplexed by it as well. Are there other things that you, we feel that way about that words have a particularly negative meaning to us and then they become something positive? I mean, this is Pride Month, right? So um, I'm, I'm mindful of what the LGBTQIA community has um, endured throughout history and how it used to be so pejorative to call someone gay. And so the whole community just said, oh, well, let's just take it on and make it something positive. Or for, for lesbians, the concept of, of being called a dyke, that was a terrible thing to say. And yet for many lesbians of a political, particular political stance or, um, uh, it's not even politics as much as it is um, action oriented or um, being willing to demonstrate about things. That, that became a, a term of pride and endearment. It's how language changes and how do we use things, how do we think of things, because how we use the language affects how we think about it. If I see some word and I have a negative association with it, and someone else is using that word in a positive way, we need to work that out. We need to define our terms better. And I think the same is true for us when it comes to words like God, Spirit, Christ, Hell, Heaven, Salvation, Forgiveness, resurrection what do those things mean and I'm not saying one meaning is right and another is wrong I'm just saying that in order to have accurate conversations even accurate understandings within ourselves we need to define those words church is another one 
for many people, church is a pejorative word. They want nothing to do with it. Um, and for others, it's synonymous with community, not with dogma, not with uh, corruption, but with community and people taking care of each other. So language. I'm lifting up today language and defining our terms and um, being open to other people using the same words in a different way. And you can say, oh, but it says in the dictionary, blah, blah, blah. Dictionary smictionary. <laughs> um, it's fine to know what it officially means. It's another thing to know how people use it and in order to communicate with each other accurately. So today's assignment class is to look at look at our language. Even the language we use, how would you define that? How would you define the words? Take the word language in the sentence that I just said, looking at our language. What does language mean? Oh, you can have a whole dictionary uh, definition about syntax and ways of communicating, but language can also be nonverbal, it can also be uh, sign language, it can be through artistic expression, uh, the secret language of bees, you know, language can mean a lot of things that usually has to do with communicating, but it may not be the structure of what we consider language if, you know, if you studied French or German or Spanish or something, you know, you have a different appreciation for different languages, but still, the word language itself, what does that mean? In, is it spoken? I think it comes from lingua, I would guess, though I could be wrong. Um, so we're thinking ways of communicating. Yeah, what, what does that mean? Um, so the language that we use, especially around our belief system, we need to be able to talk about it and define it and not take anything for granted. And that's my message for today from the shadows, because it's way too hot, even at 9 a.m. out in the sun. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great day thinking about what you mean when you use the words that you use. And maybe even if you're in conversation with others, asking them, what do you mean by that? I'm, trying, I'm thinking about language, you can say. I'm thinking about words, how they have so many different meanings. What do you mean when you said blah, blah? Okay? That ought to be exciting for the day, don't you think? Good way to spend a June day. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me for the Prayerful Pause with the Pastor. I'm Pastor Deb Swift of South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York, and we'll see you next time. And until then, God bless, take care, and bye for now.